Hi everybody, so today I'm going to show you how to convert almost any switch mode power supply from 120 volts electricity to 220. It's a very simple process and you usually just need to replace one or two components, which will cost you just a few dollars. So let's get started. I'm going to use this Netgear AC adapter as an example, but the same idea applies to almost all devices, with external or built-in power supplies. So this adapter is rated for 120 volts, and if I plug it into a 220 volts outlet, as you can see it didn't blow up and my router is up and running. But it's just a question of how long will it work. It could be hours, days, maybe weeks, but anyway it's got to fail. So first of all you have to figure out how to disassemble your device. In my case I have to remove these two screws. And now we need to gently separate these two parts, which are glued together. I'm gonna show you my method that I use for all laptop AC adapters. I have a video on that, I'll put the link at the end of this video. All you need is a thin flat head screwdriver and maybe a prying tool. Next, place your screwdriver right in the middle of the seam, and then give it a whack with your hand or hammer, but don't use too much force. Continue working your way all around the case. Now using the screwdriver or prying tool, try to loosen up the glued parts and it comes apart pretty easily. So as you can see this case is in excellent condition and you can glue it back together with a super glue. Ok, next I'm gonna remove this aluminum shielding. Let's put some flux on these pins and using a solder wick remove solder from the joints. I'll put the links for all my soldering stuff down below in the description. So the first component that we need to replace is this large high voltage electrolytic capacitor. Let's discharge it with a light bulb and then remove it using the same solder wick trick. This is 200 volts to 20 microfarad cap and if you keep using it at 220 volts, this cap will bulge and short the circuit. In that case you need to replace not only the cap but also the fuse and maybe rectifier bridge. So for 220 volts you need a capacitor with operating voltage minimum 400 volts, ideally 450. The higher the ratings, both capacitive and voltage, the bigger the capacitor. And if the size of your device allows you to fit a larger component, then go with the original capacitance value. I have to go with 150 microfarads because there is no way I can fit a 400 volt to 20 microfarads cap on this board. But don't go any lower than 40% of the original capacitance value. These electrolytic caps are polarized, they have a negative and a positive lead. And this is negative markings on the PCB, so make sure that the negative side is on this side of the board. Ok, let's solder this cap to the board. Insert the leads and bend them over to hold the cap in place. So what I'll do next is I'll apply some flux on the leads and then solder them down. Trim the leads close to the solder pads and clean the board with rubbing alcohol. So let's plug this in and see if it works. This adapter provides stable 19 volts and my router is pretty happy. Now you can use your device in any country. So let's sum up. First you have to check the voltage rating of the big electrolytic cap. If it's less than 400 volts, replace it. Now let's look closely at the adapter's AC side. This is interference suppression cap and usually they're rated at 275 volts AC, so no need to replace it. And the last component that you have to check is a varistor. Varistors are used to protect the circuit from high voltage surges, and they're always connected after the fuse in parallel with the AC line. 
When a high voltage surge is applied to a circuit, the resource resistance goes from a very high to a very low value, causing a short circuit, which blows the fuse and thus disconnecting your device circuit from the power. The resistors can be yellow, blue, red, black and they look like ceramic capacitors, so just google its marking and check the specs. In my case, this varistor is rated at 300V AC, which is pretty good. But varistors with ratings below 250V must be replaced or removed from the board. For example, this power supply doesn't have any input varistor protection. They simply chip out on that component. So, that's basically it, I hope it was helpful and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments.